In previous discussions, I've spoken about gods who are persons. I probably at times used the term personal God, but I meant a God who is a person, not a God who is personal to one person, but not another. And here are some examples of gods who are persons. A God who is a person you can um, pray to, talk to, maybe the God will talk back to you if you're lucky. And the question could be asked, how do gods who are persons fit in with our theology? Does our theology deny their existence? or does it admit that such gods can exist? I'll answer that, but first I just want to lay a little basis by talking about two types of reasoning. There is deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. Now deductive reasoning goes from the general to the particular. All dogs are mammals, Fido is a dog, Fido is a mammal. With deductive reasoning, you can be absolutely sure of your conclusion if you are absolutely sure of your premises. So if one and two are true, three must be true. Now inductive reasoning goes from the particular to the general. And a standard example of inductive reasoning is this swan is white, that swan is white, therefore all swans are white. Now when you do inductive reasoning, you're taking a leap. You can never know if all swans are white. Even if you've seen a thousand swans and they've all been white, maybe someday you'll see a swan that is not white. And as a matter of fact, that happened. And it was a big deal. Europeans had assumed all swans were white. They'd never seen a swan that wasn't. But in um, 1697, a black swan was discovered in Australia. And so you can take the inductive leap, but you can never be absolutely certain that the leap is justified. So inductive reasoning is limited. You can feel fairly certain, very certain, very confident, but you can never be absolutely certain. And here is a famous philosopher of science, Karl Popper, and induction can never prove a theory, but a counterexample can disprove it. So if you see a million white swans, you can never know that all swans are white. But if you see one black swan, you can know that all swans are not white. There's kind of a non-symmetry there. So what we call natural law, if we are honest and rigorous, we have to call habits. We know that these things happen most of the time, we know that maybe even they've happened each and every time we've looked. And there are probably laws, almost certainly, but we can't be certain because scientific laws are established by inductive reasoning. Uh, an example that uh, occurs to me, kind of a personal example. When I was in Catholic school, our seats were assigned. Often the boys were in front, the girls were in back probably not out of sexism, but because the boys were more troublesome. Now let's suppose someone from a Catholic school went to a public school, and they happen to walk in and just so happens that one seat is empty, the rest of the room is filled. They take that seat and they assume that's their seat. And day after day they see that most people sit in what they assume are their assigned seats. Once in a while they see people switch, but they assume the teacher has authorized it. But there is no law. There's just habit. I'm um, semi-retired. I teach in a community college, and I've seen this. People just often end up taking the same seat day after day throughout the term. But I, I never assign seats. There's no law of which seat you have to sit in, but there's habit. So this brings us to can gods or persons exist in our theology? And I have to say yes, but, well, let me just say why I say yes. If I am a manifestation of the ultimate ground of existence, and you are, and everything we see is, who is to say that in that sea of existence, a God could not be created? But any created being is, in the terminology of the Theological Germanica, which we saw in a previous clip, a creature. 
And that logic has even been asked about Jesus. Is Jesus a creature? The soul of Christ as being a creature is not omnipotent. So this is from Aquinas' writing, and that's uh, an objection, and then he goes on to answer it. I won't go into the details. But the point is, if gods exist who are persons, I can't say they don't. I can't say they don't. But I can say that if they do, they are creatures, like us, with more power, but creatures nonetheless. That the impersonal God is the all and the one. It's that and live we live and move and have our being. And if on that sea of existence, if I'm a wave and you're a wave, perhaps there's a wave that qualifies as a God who is a person. But it's still a creature. It's still a creation. It still flows out of the Godhead. If we think of the ultimate ground of existence as Godhead, it still flows out of the Godhead.